Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Java 2D OpenGL game development tutorial series. Today, um, I know I said previously that I wanted to work on the game loop a bit more later, uh, like after we get some more of the game done, but I changed my mind. I want to get the game loop finished now because uh, it's there's not really any reason why we have to wait. Uh, plus, I want to... Uh, it really bugs me the way we're doing it right now. It's it's okay. The way we're doing it right now, it's not that bad. Um, what it is that that is that isn't great about it is, well, basically, in a game loop, we've in our, in our game loop, we're updating the game and then we're rendering the game. Then we're sleeping for the rest of the cycle, so that we're not maxing out the CPU. You know, so like if we're gonna do this sixty times a second, we don't need to do this as fast as possible if we're if we're able to do it. Uh, faster than 60 times a second we don't need to do it that fast we can actually pause and let the th and let the cpu sleep which is what this whole bit here is for the reason why this isn't excellent is because if the game does get behind then we update the game what's going to happen is we might update the game using okay well let me put it in, in let me put it this way when you move objects in the game you move at a certain amount of uh distance per update. So if we update 60 times a second and you want to move one unit in one second, you need to move one sixtieth of a, un of a unit every sixtieth of a second. So if this is being called 60 times a second, you're going to want to uh, move a sixtieth of a second each time. But if the game somehow lags behind and uh, the time between updates, let's say one update takes longer than it's supposed to, then we might have a time difference of a 30th of a second instead of a 60th of a second. Well, no no problem. All we got to do is move all of our objects a 30th of a second, a 30th of a unit, instead of a 60th of a unit, right? Well, that's great, except for whenever you lag behind by a lot. Let's say you lag behind by a whole second. We're going to have to move all the objects an entire unit to catch up, and this can cause them to pass through other objects that are that they would otherwise have collided with. Uh it's kind of that kind of thing that that loss of precision so the kind of game loop we're going to implement the update method and the render method are not going to be completely separate like they are in some game loops and the reason for that is because our game is not going to be so computationally complex that we need to ru run the update method less often than we need to run ren uh, render the game in other words we might as well uh, update 60 times a second and render 60 times a second we don't need to update fewer times but in in more complex especially physically complicated 3d games and things like that it's better to make your update methods separate or your update um separate from the rendering so that you can render at a consistent frame rate even if your updates are taking longer than they're supposed to uh but that said let's just get started with the way we're going to be doing our game loop since we update the game and then render the game and then we sleep for the remaining amount of time what we really should be doing is we render every time we're supposed to render uh, but as far as updating goes if we manage to lag behind so that we would have performed two updates if we hadn't lagged behind we'll go ahead and perform two updates and then render so instead of update, render, update, render, update, render, we'll update as many times as we have to to catch up to where, where we're supposed to be right now. And the reason for doing this, instead of just updating once with a larger time delta in between the updates, uh, it's better for us to uh, update the world at a fixed rate and just do a certain number of those fixed rates to equal the amount of uh, time in this large delta. If that makes sense. Like, for example, if we're trying to do 60ths of a second and we end up doing... Um, a 30th of a second, instead of doing an update with a 30th of a second gap right there, we'll just do two 60ths of a second. So we keep our precision. Um, if this is complicated, or if this sounds too complicated, then uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, but even I don't... Took me, it took me a while to fully understand how the game loop worked, because uh, it's a bit of a complex thing. Um, but it's important because most of your code is running in the game loop. So I'll do my best to figure out how we're going to be doing this. I think uh, I'm just going to create some new lines here so I can write up here uh, without modifying this code down there. So basically what's going to happen is um, for our loop we're going to have the target frames per second and we've got the target time 
which we, uh, is right there. We're going to add another variable also. We're going to say private static int updates equals zero. Private static int, uh, let's make this a final int max updates equals five. Um, okay, and then a couple more private static long uh, last update time equals zero. Uh, yeah, for the moment that's what we're going to do. Uh, and what we're going to say here is basically if, uh, well, first we'll get a long that is start time. Actually, we do that already. Uh, we do that already right here, and we'll get an error if I... I'm going to go ahead and comment out this code down here so that it won't interfere with uh, what we're trying to do. Comment all of that out. Okay, so long start... Uh, let's say long current time equals system system dot nano time okay and then basically what we need to do is we need to update as long as there is still time that we have to update and by that I mean like while current time minus last update time is greater than is greater than target time the re okay what we mean by this is basically if the difference between now and the last time we updated is still greater than uh, the amount of time that we're supposed to wait between updates then it means we still have an update that needs to be done so in other words if it has been target time since our last update then go ahead and update if it's been target time uh, that was then we loop again and if it's still uh, been at least target time since our last update then update again and we're going to keep doing this uh, until we've caught up with where we're supposed to be so while current time minus last update time is greater than target time then we'll do world dot update and then last update time plus equals target time the reason why we're not setting last update time to the current time is because that will make the, that will break what we're trying to do to do here. What we're trying to do is maintain this difference right here, so that we can basically say, okay, we're if the distance between uh, current time and last update time is like let's say two instances of target time, so two sixtieths uh, of a second. And that means we need to perform two updates. So we perform an update, we add on the target time to the last update time, and then we go through the loop again. And if everything went well, then current time minus last update time will be greater than, that's just change this greater than or equal to. It will still be greater than or equal to target time, and we'll have to do it again. And we'll do keep doing it again until one of two conditions is met. Either the number of updates that we've performed during this loop has exceeded max updates, or we've completed the number of updates we're supposed to do. So what we do here, right here, say updates equals zero, because we want to reset the update counter. And then inside of here, every time we run update, updates plus plus. So add one to the updates value. Now we'll look at this and we'll say if updates is greater than max updates, then break from the loop because we should not. We don't want to get stuck in here just in case. Um, so the most updates that it will do at a time to try and catch up is 5. Uh, the lower this value is, the smoother your rendering is going to be uh, in case of lag. Most of the time, this should never actually have to come into play because you should never lag behind that much. But if it ever does, a lower number here means uh, a, slow, a slightly slower game but smoother rendering. You'll get a bit of a rendering, uh, like a hitch in the rendering. Uh, if this value is high, but you'll be able to catch up much faster. In other words, you won't have to wait another cycle to continue to catching up. You can catch up all at once, if that makes sense. Okay, so while current time equals, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, one thing that's important, we have to set last update time to the current time 
when we start the loop right here. So last update time is equal to system dot nano time, or else it will try to catch up from uh, a system time of, of zero to the system time of what's right now. In other words, it's going to be trying to catch up for about 40 something years, because that's when the system clock was started, at least if you're using a Unix system. So uh, obviously don't do that. Um, you, it's important to initialize last update time to be um, the current nano time for this to work. So once we've finished the updating thing right there and we've finished catching up as much as we're going to do in this cycle, then we can render the game. And I suppose the way we'll do that is just the, the usual renderer.render. And then to decide how much we should sleep, I guess since current time is up there, then we could then say long time taken equals system dot nano time minus current time which is actually not current time but rather the start time and then if time taken is greater than target time then thread dot sleep for target time minus time taken divided by one zero 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 so that's one and six zeros uh, and surround this with try catch uh, my trackpad's messing up <sighs> sorry about that I don't know why my my trackpad has been behaving strangely recently like sometimes it's it won't won't move the cursor when I move my finger on it okay so, let's do a test and see um, how this works out. Uh, we're going to add a quick FPS counter um, to test to see if we're getting what we're supposed to be getting. I'm going to say uh, int FPS equals zero. Long last FPS check. Long last FPS check equals zero. No, well, it should say it is equal to system dot nano time and then we'll go like this we'll just say uh, FPS plus plus if system dot nano time is greater than or equal to last FPS check plus one second in nanoseconds which is one followed by nine zeros one two three four five six seven eight nine um, then system dot out dot print line FPS and then FPS equals zero and last FPS check equals system dot nano time so this is just a quick and easy way to count FPS and print it out every second. We just count the number of frames that happen between uh, in one second and print it out. So as long as my computer doesn't freeze up uh, whenever I try to run this because it was messing uh, messing up earlier, then we'll be able to see what happens. And we'll see if we're really getting 60 frames per second like we're supposed to. This won't tell us how many updates are being performed, however, because if we ever lag behind for updates, uh, it will try to catch up, and we get a we get a failure here. Where did I go wrong? Let me see. Game loop number fifty six. Thread dot sleep for target time minus time taken. What where did I make a mistake? Oh, okay. Um, that was not smart. These two values need to be switched. If target time is greater than time taken because we can't subtract target time from time taken. Um, oh, sorry, we can't subtract time taken from target time if target time is smaller. So, that because then we'll get a negative value and you can't sleep for a negative amount of time. That just doesn't make sense. Let's try again. Okay, we run that. Wait a few seconds for the FPS counter to work and then quit. And as you can see here, we're getting approximately 60 frames per second which is actually pretty good. Um, now, the one problem is that there was that FPS cap on the 
uh, event listener, which I still got to worry about um, getting that off. I got to look that up and find out how to turn that off. Uh, I knew it before, but I forgot. Um, so we can still test it by turning down the frames per second. I think we should be able to turn down the frames per second, and we should get around 40 frames per second this time. So I'll wait a few seconds for the counter to work. And we're getting approximately 40 frames per second. So that's, I'm going to set that back to 60. That's it for this episode. Um, our timing system should be better. If I made any mistakes, um, we'll find out soon enough when we try to make the game work. Um, but as far as I know, this is the correct way uh, to implement this. I haven't implemented this game loop in a long time because once I wrote it once, like a couple years ago, I never really needed to write it again. I just used the old code over and over. Um, so hopefully I'm di I did it right this time. So thank you very much for watching this episode. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and leave any questions you might have, or comments, or feedback, or anything. I do love reading the comments when I find out that, that these videos actually did help someone out. Um, so, I appreciate that. Um, new videos every Monday through Friday. If at any point I think I'm not going to be able to uh, put up another video, I will tell you in advance. I'm not going to just disappear like I did before and uh, not put up a video for a very long time. Um, so again, thank you very much for watching, and we're going to be making some progress on this game, and I hope you're learning something. Um, I'm actually learning, relearning a lot of the stuff that I'm putting in these tutorials. So, um, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.